Hello, it's Saturday night. I mean, I mean, sorry. It's Saturday night live. I'm gonna see if I can tag a few people. Oh, tag friends and uh, no friends show up. Weird. <laughs> so I just won't tag friends. You'll come to me, right? Right. So this is our first one. This is our first Saturday Night Live. Let me know when you're here, please. I'd love to see that you are here and just kind of say where you're tuning in from or not. You don't have to give away your personal information. So we're gonna talk yarn versus uh, roving tonight in the dyeing sense. So dyeing yarn versus dyeing roving. And you're gonna watch me do uh, the same. You're gonna watch me do both with the same colorway, which is gonna be very cool. And I've got some like time-lapse magic happening where I've got roving and yarn in the same colorways that are already kind of drying. The roving I um, started last night or this morning, you know the days and nights just kind of drift into one another and you don't know which one's which. So um, the roving, hey Jane, taking a break from binging Shakespeare. Wow, fun. <laughs> Who else is here? Let me know. And invite your friends or start a watch party and make sure that if you see the button that says get notifications when Dye to Spin goes live, press that button so that you just get notifications when I'm live. And also um, attending the events, like saying that you're going to the event helps you see when I'm live in the event. So I'll be doing the Saturday Night Lives every Saturday and um, that really will just be like a hanging out. It'll be super fun and we'll have a theme every week. And then first Friday of every month is going to be Yarn Dyeing 101. Last week was my first Yarn Dyeing 101. So if you didn't catch it and, you're, and you've got some questions that you're like, man, this is probably a newbie question, go to that video in my Dye to Spin uh, page and watch it because I do go through a lot of the basics of dyeing yarn. Next month, we're going to take a deep dive into PPE because now with coronavirus, everybody knows what PPE is. So if you're down with PPE, yeah, you know me, then Yarn Dyeing 101 in June is going to talk about the do's and don'ts of yarn dyeing with your PPE. Okay, so Let's get to it. I'm gonna prop you up here on my selfie stick and show you what I've got. Let's begin. Hi, Kirsten, I see you are here. Who else is here? There's two other people that aren't commenting, but that's okay. All right, so in my soaking pot, I've got some 19 micron merino wool. Merino is a breed of sheep and the micron count just tells us how um, fine it is, basically, the coarseness value. Hey, Wanda, you made it. Great, you found us. So 19 is a pretty soft, I love dealing with the soft, close to, close to skin type of fibers. Um, I, I don't typically do with the, mo the more crunchy yarn, like for rugs and carpets and stuff. Um, they have their place in this world, but not in my world. So this is 19 micron merino roving. It's t it's actually called combed top because it's all all the fibers are combed on a big huge industrial drum. So the fibers are all lined up together and then it's kind of peeled off into long strips. Roving is a common term, kind of like when we say coke. Well, what kind of coke? Dr. Pepper right? Does anyone do that? <laughs> so a common term for soda, right, would be Coke or soda. Common term for comb top is roving. I do four ounce sections and I weigh it all out and stuff. I got my, my postal scale that needs to be replaced for sure. I'm going to be using these two crock pots here that are white because it's so much easier to see inside and see what I'm doing when they are white lined. You can't really see what's going on in here. 
Okay, so this one's off. This one is on. You can kind of see the steam or you can see the seam earlier. I'm gonna be um, doing the roving in here. And the reason why this one is not hot is because my fiber is not hot. Okay, so my fiber in here is completely room temperature. And so it is not beneficial to the fiber in any way to go from cold or room temperature to extremely hot water in the, in the pots. But superwash yarn, which is soaking in this bowl here, okay, superwash yarn is way more tolerant of temperature changes, even though, you know, you're not supposed to, but it, it can tolerate it. So Kirsten asked, would that be the same as worsted once it's spun? So there is a, um, there's like a worsted spun and woolen spun and it has to do with the technique and of course the end result is a little bit different so getting into that would be i bet there's a good youtube uh video on worsted versus woolen spun yarn yeah yarn on a spinning wheel and um yeah so comb top is really good for uh worsted spinning and then like Fluffy stuff is really good for woolen spinning. It's either that or the other way around what I just explained. Okay, we're gonna be dyeing up pesky pixie tonight. Make the little clapping hands in the comments because we all love pesky pixie. <laughs> and this is actually for a, um, a customer and the end result braid is for a customer. So actually both of these pesky pixie braids that I've, one I've already dyed and one I'm going to be dyeing with you, they're both spoken for. Um, the yarn, however, is not. So we're going to start with squeezing out, and my, my water level is pretty low, and I know that there's vinegar in this water. Yeah, sometimes you can just smell it, and but you know what? When in doubt, glug it out. That's my next million dollar tip. When in doubt, glug it out. Now when you're squeezing the water out of the, the roving, you have to squeeze and then release. Cause if you drag your hand, <laughs> you'll rip your fiber. So that's one of the main differences. It's almost like you're milking a cow with an incredibly long milker. <laughs> so you're squeezing out, releasing, and then you almost have to like go in and kind of hook it onto your thumb. This is just because the way I do things, I like to have most of the fiber completely um, wrung out before I start. And a lot of it's because I don't use any plastic wrap. You're putting that on a t-shirt with for me? About the, uh, the milking a cow with an incredibly long teat? Or um, when in doubt, glug it out. <laughs> oh, you'll never know what I'll say here on Saturday Night Live. <laughs> I'm sorry if I offended you with my tea joke. I bet Jane's laughing. Jane, if you're laughing, put your laughy faces on. <laughs> okay, we're almost done here. Again, this is four ounces of roving. 21, no, 19 micron count merino, which is nice and fine. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start circling, almost like cinnamon roll, around in my crock pot here. When I get to my first layer, I'm going to kind of like lay that there, and all the little fibers stick to your hands. Fiber attracts fiber, so I just kind of do that. I get a little ball of it, onto the floor it goes. 
And then I've got to find my dust mask. This is just a fabric dust mask that I got on um, Amazon. You know, it's probably not doing its job if there's dye on the inside of the dust mask. <laughs> Nervous laughter. Uh, there's a pocket for like this little carbon filter thingy. That's what I use. When I was pregnant, I was in a full on ventilation mask. And boy, was it comfortable. Okay, here I go, masking up. Pesky Pixie. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start sprinkling my color directly onto the fiber. And I'm gonna pay attention to the sections that I'm, that I'm working. You don't have to put the color in the same section every single time. I just prefer that because the color will move and I don't want to muddy it up too much. You want a healthy dose of dye powder on this first layer. You can use Kool-Aid. I would not recommend the Wilton's gel for something like this. This is very much like sprinkle and spread. But the cool part is I don't have to, what I normally do is I poke it. I don't have to do that for this because what I'm going to do is I'm gonna continue layering now from the inside out layering the roving on top of my existing layer. And usually it only does like two layers. And if there's a little bit extra, you just kind of tuck it in right in there. And then our second layer of color. So you might be thinking, oh my gosh, it's completely dry on the top. Don't you worry. We will uh, do the spread part shortly. What I love about these colors is they work so well together. And when you're choosing to dye without plastic wrap, it's kind of a good rule because your colors are most likely going to touch one another. And you have to learn your colors so that you understand which colors are overpowering or which colors can have the tendency to overpower. Now we spread. So we sprinkled, now we spread. Rule of thumb, you can always go back in with more color. You can't always take it out. And right away I'm seeing that I'm gonna need more water, but we'll do that in just a second. On, high. Crock pot is on. So it's the beauty of the crock pot. They will warm up slowly as to not shock your fiber. It's almost like they were made for people like us. So how's everybody doing today? What's our big victory for this Saturday? It was a gorgeous day up in my area. Comment below and tell me what great thing you did. And if it was sit on the couch and relax, please put that because that's a great thing. What did you do today? I mailed off about eight orders because I don't like going into the post office. I just want to go to the kiosk, the um, self-service kiosk. So they finally got their scale working again so I could mail off my packages. So I mailed off the last of my virtual orders. 
I got a couple new orders today and yesterday, so that was great. So I wanna pull the roving away from the edge just a little bit. I wanna pull the roving away from each other, just in the gaps, just to encourage the color to move. So Jane, you've been knitting socks, laundry, tub soak with a long, long hoarded soaps. Ooh, queen soaps. What's that saying? The queen only bathes with 100 year old soap. That's because soap over time loses moisture and so it, it gets denser and denser and like 100 year old soap can last forever. All right, so like I was saying earlier, I thought that we would need more water. I don't think that anymore. The top of the roving is like glistening with um, moisture. You stained one of your patio recliners, Kirsten, awesome. So the top of it's glistening with moisture. I'm going to make sure to cover that. And honestly, this will be getting really, really hot over the next couple of hours. And then what I'll do is I will shut it off for the night and just leave it to cool. I don't wanna be messing with this roving when it's steamy, steamy hot. I don't wanna be using my tongs, squeezing it out. That encourages felting. So be very, very gentle with the roving when it's incredibly hot. In other words, leave it alone and let it cool. Okay, so let's go to our other pot for our yarn. I'm gonna do a little experiment with my, um, my business with Pesky Pixie because I have Pesky Pixie it, using one of my methods of dyeing. And then this one, I'm gonna use the sprinkle and spread method. And I'm gonna see which one sells first. I love them both, so it's really hard for me to choose favorites. Okay, so over here, I'm gonna squeeze out my yarn. I'm going to, and you may see this, but like there's some blue left over in the crock pot. Ain't no thing. It's not going to show up after I dye my yarn. Cinnamon roll. Okay, the water level is a little high. Oh Lord, that's hot. Okay, times like these call for uh-oh. I've got all these jars surrounding me and none of them are empty. <laughs> this one will have to do. Oh my gosh. Okay, I've got to look. See, this is how <laughs> this is how I do not want to go um to the kitchen. Like it's 10 steps away. So this red color if it gets into the dye bath with my yarn, not gonna worry about it because I'm gonna die over it, right? But I do wanna get some of this, not bad. I wanna get some of this water out. Next week on Saturday Night Live, we're gonna talk about how to make color stay in place or how to intentionally make color move. So we're basically gonna be doing some different um, experiments with the sprinkle and spread method versus the color play method versus, um, you know, like deep, deep dye pot soaking for semi-solid colors. It's going to be fabulous. This time next week, same time, same place. Hey, Chanel. Oh my gosh, Chanel, I've been thinking about you. Have you gotten your package yet? Comment below that you have, Chanel. Everyone, everyone, cross your fingers and put the little cross fingers emoji. Chanel needs her package. Chanel needs her package. All right, we're gonna dye this up. Now the water level is a bit high for my liking, but I think it's gonna be okay. It's gonna be gorgeous. 
because the colors are gorgeous. Sprinkle. Always, always, always put the cap back on your thingy. Chanel, oh, Chanel, you haven't. Okay. I'm crossing my toes for you, Chanel. You just can't see it. Second color. I go easy with this burgundy because it spreads. Didn't look like I went easy with it. <laughs> it's all right, it's gorgeous. I saw that Kimberly popped on. Kimberly, one of these rovings is for you. And the other one is for Mary. All right, so we did sprinkle, now we spread. Sent a package to my sister a week ago and it took forever, oh. You know, I sent a package to New York and it took like two weeks. That was about a month ago, maybe two months ago. So much for priority mail. Okay, we've sprinkled, now we spread. Notice how I am leaving this white spot, okay? In my early days of dyeing, I would leave zero space between my colors. And it was so oversaturated that you couldn't really tell any of the, um, the transitions. There was no relief, you might want to say. And one, you know, one color would always overtake the other. So even if you know, like the burgundy is moving around this way already, it's totally fine. All right, so this one's gonna be going. Now the, the temperature was on low just to warm up the crock pot. I'm gonna put it on high. The crock pots are great. It'll start to like bubble on the edges. And then I will turn the heat off. I'll leave these two overnight to cool down. Because after this, really, I'm making my husband get me, um, there's this place in Dallas called um, Mohat Bai. It's Thai food. It's like luxury Thai food. And it is so good. So they're closed on Sunday. So I'm getting that for Mother's Day. So hooray for Mother's Day. So glad to be spending Mother's Day with my family. I know you guys are too. So let's take a look at our little... Well, our roving looks exactly the same. Exactly the same. Nothing changed. <laughs> so whenever I was first learning how to dye yarn without plastic wraps, one of the reasons why I insisted on it was because of dyeing roving. So the story is my husband back in December of 2010 bought me a spinning wheel. And so I wanted to learn how to dye roving first. And all of the tutorials that I found were spread saran wrap on your counter, lay out your roving, you know, kind of in a, a dye, you know, like a zigzag type of pattern, paint your dye stock on it, like a liquid dye stock, paint that on there, roll it up into a, like a jelly roll or a cinnamon roll or a pumpkin cheesecake roll. And then put it in the, in the pot, steaming boiling water to set the color. And then I found one tutorial, one tutorial where someone had put her roving in a crock pot. And I was like, genius, this is what I'm going to do. And so I started experimenting with that. Um, and I just took to it uh, like a duck to water. So I want you to see one of my fails. Today I had a fail. <laughs> now, you know, a fail to, it looks like sickness. <laughs> it's been cooling in this pot. One thing that I um, just can't do is waste dye. So I had 
some leftover dye in my crock pot and I was like, oh my gosh, that's too much to throw out. So I threw in four ounces of roving to suck, soak up the dye. And then I was like, huh, what colors go good together? Um, I don't know if the coffee hadn't kicked in or if I, I don't, I don't even know why I was thinking that these colors would go great together. But to cleanse your eyes, <laughs> I want to show you this. Okay, so this is Pesky Pixie. This, let me move my little table out of the way. This is what I dyed up yesterday. So this is my 7030 um, Merino Silk DK Weight. I, I knit up a scarf using this for a friend of mine and it knits beautifully. But this is the, um, the experiment that I wanna do. Hey, Regina, you're not late, girl. You're right on time. So um, this is the experiment that I want to do. This is the color play method that I use where I just sprinkle in the dye first into the water and then I just lay the yarn on there and I just like set it and forget it, right? And that method came from the necessity of whenever I had a newborn and, you know, he was in his room and I was in the kitchen dyeing or in the garage dyeing yarn. And I just had, you know, T minus two minutes to dye a skein of yarn. And so I would throw the dye in there, throw the yarn in there, turn it on high and, and leave it. And, and I could come back in an hour and it'd be fine, right? So um, this is Pesky Pixie with the color play method. Now, whenever we um, drag our skein out and I'll probably just post pictures in the dye to spin group of what our skein looks like from the uh, sprinkle and spread method. What I already know is going to happen is those three colors are going to be uh, very uh, compartmentalized but they aren't going to be like a solid self-striping repeat but you're going to be able to see the three colors way more clearly. So this is more of a wash. So if you have a really busy pattern, something like this is going to give you color but not overtake the pattern, which is awesome. Okay, I've got to share something with y'all. Dun 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 I practiced that. If y'all are laughing out loud, you better comment LOL because I feel like <laughs> my SNL jokes aren't good enough. No, I'm kidding. I know they're good enough. All right. <clears throat> These are inspired by one of my newest customers from the Virtual Fiber Fest last weekend, Jessie. She asked me if I could dye up. <laughs> good. Chanel's laughing. Yay. If, if I could dye up some yarn for her based on two characters. Girlfriend, I know. Baby Yoda is what I was thinking of. I was thinking this. But it's not Baby Yoda. Think of Harry Potter. That's the only clue I'm going to give. Think of Harry Potter. Who can guess? Two different characters. Comment below if you think you know, and no cheating if you already do, because some of you get text messages and pictures from me when I'm dyeing these new yarns up, and you already know what it is. So what could it be? And yes, this is screaming Baby Yoda, and I might just continue it. Um, I, love, I love the Baby Yoda, but it's not Baby Yoda. It's not Mandrake Root. This one is going to be a little more obvious, I think. No comment. Yeah, Kirsten already knows. The gold is coming in a little... You're not a Harry Potter person. It's okay. You're a yarn person. We love you anyway. So the gold is coming in a little hot. Tiger King. <laughs> See, I haven't watched Tiger King yet. So poor me. It's one of the animal characters in Harry Potter. 
Who's gonna know? I might have another one of these that are ready that's a little different. Let me see if it's dry. All right, so it's not Tiger King. And I've got another one of these that I did a little bit of a different, a different, um, less gold. Little less gold. This might be a little more representative of the character. This one is an animal. And this one is, oops. <laughs> this one is like a magical creature. Give up. Regina, I will dye you this baby Yoda yarn. Oh, close Chanel. I could see why you would say Buckbeak. It, this is um, Hedwig. It's Hedwig. So Buckbeak has a little more blue, a little more silver. Um and Hedwig has the white and black with the gold eyes. So yeah, this is my, my newest Harry Potter line. This is my Hedwig. And then of course, Regina, if you want baby Yoda, I will give you baby Yoda. So cute. This one is Dobby. So Dobby has these beautiful innocent green eyes and I really wanted to capture that. The owl Hedwig, yeah. Yes, this Dobby. So this one is Dobby. His skin is like, you know, real wishy-washy and his clothes were almost the same um, color of his skin. But I go in with the, you know, cause he's kind of uh, dirty and his clothes are torn. And so I really wanted to capture that. But yeah, Regina won. So the beautiful green eyes and the tatty secondhand clothes. But yeah, I love the um, Hedwig. Yeah. Librarians who have never read Harry Potter. Yeah, you have to be the founder of that exclusive club. <laughs> You're funny. Yeah, so something that I love to do for my, um, for my customers and my friends, excuse me while I flip you, is to dye yarn for them based on like a picture or a favorite character. It's something that's really fun. It's like solving a puzzle, right? So if you really um, want something to be dyed into yarn that is a picture or a favorite character, then I can totally work with you and do that. In fact, my friend Kirsten and I are launching our uh, vacation yarns where we take your most colorful memories and we turn them into irresistible yarn. I did this for some of my friends, a lot of my friends in um, 2017 when we went to Scotland together. And this was like a knitting fiber frenzy trip. It was amazing. And at the end of it, we were talking about all these amazing colors and things. And I said, wait a second, I can turn this into a set of mini skeins. I can dye these colors that we're talking about. And um, I did, and I sold a lot of them to just the people in, in the trip. And you know, I haven't made anything out of my Scotland yarn. I don't think they've made anything out of their Scotland yarn. And it doesn't really matter because you can just look at it and remember the, the colors and look at the colorway names and kind of recall these memories. And it's really just a fun thing. All right, so... Um, let's look at the fiber. The fiber is not going to be dry, but you're not going to know that. Let me flip you around again. So let me take this off. Ah. Okay. So I am all for white spots. They add interestingness. It gives you a moment to see all of what the color is made of. I mean, look at that. Without white spots, you wouldn't get that. Is that a heart? Huh, it almost looks like a little heart. Boom, 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 boom. 
So dying roving gives you this opportunity to have these gorgeous layers of color. And when the colors collide, it's like different colors in the mix. And to be honest, really, whenever this is spun up, y'all, these white spots will give so much uh, character and depth to the yarn. It's really, really cool. And even if I open it up some more, there's way more white spots in there. This is my personal dye method. I love this. You get these really intense. Oh, look at that. Another thing that you can't get with yarn is all of this movement here. So the dye shows up very differently on roving than on yarn. And then when it's spun, whoever is spinning has complete control over, you know, how thick or thin the yarn is. And it's just if they want to ply it together with the same color, I mean, it's just amazing. So, like, color shows up so much differently on, um, you do? Oh, my gosh. Well, I, I'm so glad. Good, good, Regina. So, yeah, I, um, I love the white spots. I think it adds character. Personally, for me, it's something that I always have been okay with, and so a lot of my rovings, um, have white spots in them. It's like almost like a character trait of my of my rovings. So, uh, Kimberly, this one's for you. It's drying, and I will be shipping it out soon. And of course, if you guys ever have any requests of like, um, you know, I want this type of colorway, but I really want it in fiber. Um, oh, Rodeo Queen. Yeah, that was years back. Oh my gosh. Um, you guys know you can request that from me. So I'm going to put this back on the drying rack. And I hear my husband ordering the pho as we speak. So what are you guys having for dinner tonight? Are you guys doing anything for Mother's Day tomorrow? Or are you just going to be calling your mom? I can only call my mom tomorrow. She's down in Houston. So comment below what you're doing tomorrow. And that might just be relaxing. And I hope you learned something. I want you to, here's the teacher in me. Ooh, I love fuzzies. I want you to comment below one thing you learned that's the difference between dyeing yarn and dyeing fiber. This is when Saturday Dye Night Live turns into a classroom. <laughs> no, seriously, because I know you learned something. The difference between dyeing yarn and fiber. And you know what? If you don't want to comment, you don't want you don't have to comment. Yeah. Calling your mom. 2.0. We're gonna check on our little yarn. Okay, so I know from working with these colors that some of these colors soak in way faster than others. Like this burgundy takes forever, but that purple almost immediately. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just move it around a little bit. Oh, see, there's some burgundy up in there, getting into that blue. And whenever we move it around just a tad, it encourages it to go to places that it's never gone before. Yes, fiber, more flexibility and variation. Yarn, more control. Yes, ma'am. Crafting all day sounds good to me, too. All right, y'all. Pancakes, bacon, maple syrup, and butter, and coffee for Mother's Day. Do you have any of that gin left from Harris Distillery? or any dram buoy to put over your oatmeal or whatever it was. That was divine when we were in Scotland. Okay, y'all, that is it. I am going to sign off. I love all of you and thank you for joining me. And Regina, message me please about the Baby Yoda yarn. 
and I am now on a mission to actually, oh good, you're starting, you're starting a new shawl, Wanda. Good, yeah. Yeah. Yes, and Wanda, if you have an idea, or if you have one picture, you want to send it to me, and we can start talking about some, some yarn color ways to capture those memories for you, because then you get to knit it up. Isn't that amazing? And then it's a conversation piece. A little choresing to do, then it's all crafty. Good, Regina. Oh, yeah, keep it quiet. Yeah, good memories, though. All right, my loves. We will see you next Saturday, same time, same place, where we talk about the movement of color and how to keep it from moving without plastic wraps. Y'all have been awesome. Thank you. Bye.